to mention, I, I, can't, I don't remember the names of all the teachers my mom worked with. Thank you for coming. I, I wish you'd been invited. <laughs> all of the teachers that you ever worked with and all and especially the students but there's no way to figure out who the kindergartners were 25 years ago <laughs> but just going around uh, just the room here um, Millie Hoffman one of my mom's dearest friends two doors down uh, a big wig at uh, Milwaukee Public Schools actually helped my mom get her job after my father passed away and re resumed teaching it meant the world for her to get right back into what she had done before marrying my father and uh, before Michael was born uh, and her family here, thank you so much for coming. Um, and here we have uh, my, my cousin Diane, Tim, and the kids uh, coming in from Madison. Thank you. And Sharon, uh, Aunt Sharon's uh, home was the Thanksgiving place for our family forever. And just loved coming up there every year. Um, my own family is back here. Uh, the three granddaughters, Erica, Catherine, Maria, and my wife, Bridget, uh, Jason, my uh, Hudson, thanks again for coming from Philadelphia, California. Uh, the locals here, uh, Jacoby family. Uh, this was my basketball coach, and it's, it would tell you, I, it's amazing I didn't go pro. <laughs> just that I felt like um, my calling was something else in life. I, I wanted to give some other kid a chance. <laughs> you said, I, I know it broke your heart, but because you would have been famous if I had gone into the NBA. But, uh, my, uh, Judy, uh, my college roommate Dave, uh, friend from like, six years old, uh, Dave, David DeGear, my right, Angie, uh, Dave's wife, Angie. Um, uh, my, my cousin's over here from my mother's side. Thank you so much for the readings uh, today. I really appreciate it. Um, Paula coming out from San Diego, thank you. Debbie from Alabama, thank you. Um, Diane, uh, I, I don't know if a lot of you realize for the last five and a half years, Diane has taken such fantastic care of I'm enormously grateful for everything you did, Diane. And I know that this loss was, uh, in some ways, even more intense for you because you were with my mom every day. And so thank you for coming, and thank you for everything you did for her. Um, and then over my near table here, uh, Gary, Mary, Linda, Bill, and families, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So anybody want to get up and say anything, you just come right up and speak your mind and your heart. Again, thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, I didn't come so far. I'd like to have all what told them. But my husband and I were in the bridge club with uh, your dad and mom, and your mom got me so organized. I still have books she gave me for my kids, and my oldest is now principal at Cooper School in MPS, and my other two children also taught in MPS. But uh, she also taught me how to label all of your games, your puzzles. The teachers remember how organized Anne was. So there'll be lots of wonderful memories in my heart, too. Well, how about a toast then to Anne? Well, I guess I'm going to speak real quick. So, my aunt Anne is my dad's twin sister. And um, it was always very special to me. I'm a left -hand. And she, as a teacher, she understood how difficult it was for left handed people not to end up with ink all over their hands. I think I got probably one of the first spiral notebooks that opened at the top. I also got uh, a hefty lefty eraser that was like this big. I'm not sure what that was all about. <laughs> um, I would always come through uh, Milwaukee when the kids and I, I'm retired Air Force as my husband is as well. We were stationed at Minot Air Force Base, which is where I retired out of. But when we would come to the East Coast to visit family, I would always call poor Aunt Anne with very short notice. I'm sure she <laughs> loved that. I'd say, Aunt Anne, do you, do you have time to put up with us for an overnighter? Well, the very first trip with my little guy, who was like five, and our daughter that was four and a half years older, my son went through the little clear shield that went over the basement cover. I'm like, oh my gosh, you've been so glad to get rid of us. <laughs> but, um, so uh, she gave the kids books out of her little library, which they still have, and admit the world to them. But um, the many conversations that we had, 
oftentimes centered around being Irish and um, <laughs> and how four-leaf clovers were an anomaly. See, I always thought that four-leaf clovers were indeed a good luck. And I have a 103-acre farm, so I was telling her about these four-leaf clovers I found. And she said, Debbie, mm, they're an anomaly. <laughs> no. So I had a little dried up four leaf clover that I picked from the farm last week uh, to bring to her site. And I also have um, a ridiculous little thing, proud to be Irish. So we all know that Ann Ann was so proud to be Irish. But I so loved our visits. We, my sister and I came out for her birthday a few years back. And then I came back with Andy. She must have called Andy to come and, and uh, entertain me. But we had an absolute blast. We, Andy took me all over the city, and um, just so many fond memories. Mm -hmm. But thank you, Andy, for all that you all did. Thank you for inviting us. Mm -hmm.
it was a gift for everybody, but she was always enjoying going to art shows and you know, the, uh, bazaars where people made things to be sold. And we were, I was also the recipient of many of those gifts and, and Diana's and those tree ornaments that were from time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, until a couple of years ago, they were always, oh, you, you had, you know, this Christmas you didn't, otherwise you always had the, the uh, ornaments that Anne bought at uh, bazaars and churches and what have you. And Joy remembered all of them, all of the years. She was a very giving woman. Mm -hmm. me a ticket to come out to Milwaukee. My father had just inherited, he had gotten home from the Vietnam War and inherited single parenting with three children. I was the youngest of three and she brought me out here for, for several weeks to, uh, to spend with her and I was again like the daughter she never had, not that the boys were so bad except <laughs> Except I might add, now Andy was totally innocent, he was only like four. However, the other two, Steve and Michael I might add, I was, I had a cot in the boys' room. So they had the two twin beds and my cot was at the end of the room and I'm sure Michael remembers this. I woke up early the next morning, thank God I woke up early. Um, and I was at the entrance to the stairs to go downstairs. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And the boys, um, the boys had moved my cot in the middle of the night. <laughs> Obviously, they didn't want a sister. <laughs> but um, I also, during... Their loss. <laughs> Absolutely. So, in addition to that, um, it was the first time I'd ever had a manicure. I had a a hair appointment at a beauty parlor. I had all my clothes came from some very nice place downtown. Yeah. And uh, I had a gown that matched the robe. Oh my. And I went to the state fair with Stephen and she gave me $20. Can you imagine? <laughs> so in my shadow box at home to this day is I call it the Democrat and the Republican, I'm not getting political with you all, but I have the little donkey and the little elephant that we, that Stephen and I put a thousand dollars in, it seemed like, or a thousand quarters to get that little arm to come down. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got the donkey and the elephant, and I still have those to this day, but you know, uh, when you lose your mother overnight and you 
game, an app that you knew but didn't know real well, and all of a sudden it's just, uh, uh, it's kind of like a little Disney World visit, but she just meant so much to me. And during that trip, she had a little dinner party, and I learned to make melon balls. <laughs> <laughs> and I also learned that Andy loved to uh, cut a wedge of um, cream cheese and roll it up in bologna. <laughs> I was like, where did this come from? <laughs> and then about the only thing I got, two other things, I got kicked out of the reading room because Andy wouldn't pay attention and do his lesson, so I couldn't be in there. And then I learned that Brill Cream that, that my uncle had was not toothpaste. <laughs> Wow. Yes. It was quite an education.